Welcome, Welcome to, Miami. to Miami. Nice and warm down here, yes, buddy. Yes, it is. I'm not going to gain weight like this. <laughs> I'm starting to come to Atlanta and now it's game time. What about you, kid? Having a great time. It's time to get down to business now, though. This guy right here is like a fish. He <laughs> loves the water. <laughs> Hot. Ready to play this game. We've been out here too long. Ain't that right time? Yep. Ready to get it going, man. Ready to get going. You ready? Better be. The Penn State Nittany Lions were enjoying their reward for winning the Big Ten title, spending the holidays in sunny Florida. For the veterans, it was a time for one more shot at glory. For the younger guys, opportunity was in the air, along with the sweet smell of citrus. It was the end of more than an extra month of invaluable practice time. It was a new year on the calendar, with glimpses of the future sweating out its first days. For Joe Paterno, the scene was familiar. Success at the Orange Bowl in his early years at Penn State helped build the foundation of his legendary career. He was glad to be back in the land of the sun, not for himself, but for a new generation of Nittany Lions. Give the Nittany Nation a football game anywhere and they'll be there. Put it in Florida in the winter and they'll take over the city. The Nittany Lions arrived at Dolphins Stadium for one of only two bowl games remaining, their grand finale, a date with Florida State. I really had a cool point. Best running back in the league right here. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. So, you know, I had to play big brother to most of these guys on this team. That's what they're doing. That's kind of just what they're doing. Yep, that's basically. Brandon Short, LeVar, Courtney Brown did it with me. That's, you know, I had to return the favor and do it to the younger guys, you know. And younger guys are so much a part of this story. Kansas City Chiefs star Larry Johnson was one of many members of the Nittany Lion family who came to show his support to find out for himself how good this team was. The night for football, the night for Penn State football. Hopefully. <laughs> At the Orange Bowl, it's a beautiful night. Should be playing the Seminoles. Should be a very entertaining game. Very hard hitting, fast game. Hopefully, we'll come out on top. Hey, hey, you know about Penn State, homeboy? Welcome to the South. So much for Southern hospitality, but the Tomahawk choppers were outnumbered in their own state, and there were plenty of friendly faces dressed in white. The 
welcome to Beaver Stadium, the one with palm trees. Welcome to Penn State's fifth trip to the Orange Bowl. Welcome indeed to the South. Approaches the ball and the Orange Bowl is underway. Three Super Bowls and now the best coaching matchup ever. Through the back of the end zone, Florida State will start at its own 20. From their own 20, the Seminoles had to face a defense that had been as good as any in the country for two years. Two left, two right, back goes Weatherford, pressure, screen, complete to Washington, taken down by Jason Alford for a one-yard loss at the 49-yard line. You cannot ask three guys to play better than that. The defense got off to a much better start than the offense, if only because tailback Tony Hunt was hurt in the first series. After becoming just the 10th Penn State running back in history to rush for over 1,000 yards, Hunt's night was over already. Lorenzo Booker brought down by Paul Kozlowski, the junior from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. 12th first team All-America linebacker at Penn State. He's, he has been all over every field he has been on, and he's one of the most instinctive linebackers, Mike, that we've seen in years in college football. Night settled in, and so did Penn State. The loss of Hunt would not keep the Nittany Lions from their appointed rounds. More than a month since they played their last game, they looked crisp and businesslike the second time they got the ball. Second and four, Robinson back to pass, dumps to the king of the wheel route. 15, 20, first down, 25, 30, and out of bounds. Far side of the first down. The tailback again is Scott. Robinson, play action, rolls near side. Good block by Snow to help. Throws downfield, he's got Kilmer, 45, 50. Florida State, 47-yard line and a first down. And Brandon Snow is the big reason why that play works. Uh, Brandon Snow peeling back, making a good decision so that Michael Robinson rolling out to his left. Now, this is not an easy throw. You gotta turn your shoulder pads downfield and Michael Robinson does a good job of getting the football, good play action fake getting outside of pocket, and Kilmer making the catch. With Hunt hurt, Penn State made some backfield adjustments. Austin Scott had averaged more than four yards a carry, but in a limited role during the season, waiting for this kind of opportunity. Justin King's the tailback. The wing back is Scott. Wide outs each way. Robinson, inside hand off to Scott, 35, to the 30, 25, 20, Austin Scott, 15, inside the 15, and dropped at the 11 yard line. First down, Whitney Lyons. You just never know with Joe Paterno what might happen when you have such a long time to prepare. This time Scott lined up on the inside and it's a, it's a trap here. What a great block by Charles Rush. The play opens up and hits quick and it's a new little wrinkle from Dalen Hall and having this much time to prepare, something Florida State has not seen. Scott lined up at fullback. While the Seminoles tried to figure out who this number 33 was, Penn State continued their regular season success up front, in the trenches, with an offensive line that started the season well and improved all year long. Robinson, Austin Scott, up the middle, touchdown Penn State! The Nittany Lions take the lead! Penn State had shown quick strike ability all year on offense, at one point putting together 13 straight scoring drives that took less than three minutes. The first punch thrown at Florida State, an 85-yard drive that naturally took less than three minutes. Ironically, though, in a season that featured a high-octane Penn State offense that included everything but the kitchen sink, this drive was an old-fashioned lesson in precise execution at the line of scrimmage. A great start, but only the opening cannon shot and a little war between the North and the South that was just warming up. It was hard to tell which folks in the white shirts were having more fun, those in the stands or those on the field as Penn State gave the Seminoles an introduction to football the way they play it in the Big Ten. Defense is dominated early, but there were fireworks just ahead. <laughs> the 
The Nittany Lions survived an early interception and then went ball hunting themselves. While many bowl games had been wide open offensive showcases, these two teams were determined not to give an inch. Sets time down the middle, intercepted Allen to minus to the 15, to minus 20, Allen to the 25, 30, Allen to minus to the 33 yard line. He's trying to get the ball to Carr, Carr's going up to field, Allen's about his reading, Weatherford all the way breaks underneath Carr, comes up with the interception. Three straight years, Alan Zemitis has been named all Big Ten. Each year, teams threw less and less to his side of the field. Drew Weatherford found out why. This pick moves Zemitis into a tie for fifth on Penn State's all-time interception list. And it gave the Nittany Lions and their faithful a huge lift. But Penn State couldn't take advantage of the turnover and the tune was about to change. Capitals will kick it away. Here they come. Capitals kicks it out of there. A high floating punt. Reed backpedals, takes it at his own 13. Reed, 20, dances outside, 25. Oh. Through the middle, 35, 40. Willie Reed, 50. To the 40. Willie Reed to the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown for the state. Willie Reed returning his third punt for a touchdown. This season, 87 yards. After playing nearly a perfect half defensively, the game was suddenly tied, and for Penn State, it was about to get worse. First down, Lorenzo Booker. Shot out of the cannon. Lorenzo Booker inside the 10, inside the 5. Touchdown. A punt return and a one-play drive, and just like that, Florida State scored twice within 80 seconds. But what a classic example of foreshadowing. Florida State kicker Gary Sismatia missed the point after. Penn State punter Jeremy Capinos found the solution to Willie Reed. He nearly got Penn State two points. Penn State has punted five times this quarter. Full complement of timeouts. Look out, the safety! A safety is drawn here. Let's see the mark. No, oh, they're marking him at the half yard line. Oh boy. This is all correct. Weatherford's lucky he even got the handoff there. <laughs> you know it? I mean, you have a defense here that's trying to come up with some points. It's Scott Paxton. I think maybe the most underrated player from the Big Ten this year. Penetrated the Florida State defensive line. Got in there to make a play. Very close call. The officials correctly ruled that James Coleman's forward progress got him out of the end zone. But the play in series was huge for field position. Penn State got the ball back at the Florida State 40 with just 17 seconds left. Robinson in the gun. Takes the snap. Oh. Pressure by Sims. Throws far side. It's caught by Norwood who gets out of bounds at the 24-yard line with 12 seconds left of the half. Penn State's quick strike ability was never a better tool to have on their belt than right here. They're coming with a blitz. Blitz coming, Robinson sets it. Throws for Kilmer in the end zone. Kilmer just dies. He's got it. Touchdown, Penn State. What a play by Michael Robinson. What a catch by Ethan Kilmer. And the Nittany Lions strike with six seconds to go in the half. Boy, you talk about having your three timeouts. If they did not have their three timeouts at the end of this half, they never get this opportunity. Bobby Bowden ends up running out the clock at the end of the half. Ethan Kilmer did not play high school football. The former track and basketball star transferred to Penn State from Shippensburg University, walking on to the football team. He is living proof of what happens to those who dream big and work hard at Penn State. His acrobatic catch from Michael Robinson would have been memorable in a regular season game, but on national television in the Orange Bowl, it will be talked about for years. Most important, it got Penn State the lead. The Nittany Lions headed to the locker room on a high. But little did anyone know that this game wasn't even close to being half over.
Defensive coordinator Tom Bradley had led the Lions' D to top 20 rankings in no less than five different categories. For the second straight year, they were a dominating unit. From the front line to the secondary, and as always at Penn State, at linebacker. They continued to pound and pressure Florida State in the second half, carefully nurturing the smallest of possible leads. Motion by Davis toward us. They pitch it to Brooker to the left. Brooker wrapped up and throw down. Their swarming pressure paid off, and it was only fitting when these guys were the first to put points on the board in the second half. Weatherford takes the snap. Back to pass in the end zone. Chase batted down by Jimmy Shaw and oh. incomplete. And it's safety. It's a safety. safety. The flag is I down. I think it's intentional grounding. Well, let's see here. I, that's Weatherford's arguing for intentional grounding. If he is, that's a big two points. Considering what was ahead, it was a huge two points. Intentional grounding in the end zone, and Penn State had a safety early in the fourth quarter. They now had a little more breathing room, led by a field goal, and they got the ball back. The snap to Robinson, back to pass. Delay blitz over the middle. Derwin at the 30, it's on the 30, to the 26 of Florida State, and a first down. And Robinson took another shot and is slow in getting up. Jordan Norwood is one of the fab freshmen that helped make this team excel. A player who has Penn State fans salivating at future possibilities. At the other end of his career, senior Michael Robinson would leave nothing on the field at the Orange Bowl, except maybe his helmet. It was his final game. But just when this gutsy leader was on the threshold of clinching an Orange Bowl victory, the door slammed suddenly shut. Robinson lost the football. The hitting there, Florida State has recovered. There are worse things than putting the game in the hands of Penn State's defense, but it was a unit that was about to lose one of its best players. Puzlosny's bringing pressure now. Blitz by Puzlosny, over the middle, it's complete. To Cody Fagg in the 40, tripped up and down at the Penn State 38-yard line, and Puzlosny is down. Oh, gosh. And the Buckus Award winner, best linebacker in the country, is down. Quickly, Dr. Wayne Sebastianelli is out. Oh, man. Lorenzo Booker blocked him as he was coming he in. He got cut that time, Jack, on the blitz. Well, he came, tried to go high and come over one of the... And he's holding his right knee right now. Oh, boy. Paul Pazlesny had not only won the Buckus Award as the nation's best linebacker, but the Bednarik Award as the nation's best defensive player. His dream season and that of the Nittany Lions suddenly was turning into a nightmare. Moments before, they appeared to be ready to add to Joe Paterno's record for bowl victories. Now, this game and Puzlesny's NFL future appeared in doubt. As Puzlesny was carted off the field, the Lions regrouped. Appropriately enough, in this year of the freshman at Penn State, Puzlesny's replacement was Sean Lee, a freshman. He strapped it on. The Lions dug in. This group had been through too much adversity to give in now. And they forced a long field goal try. 47-yard attempt. Put down by Hall. Kick is on its way by Sismation. That kick is good. The game is tied at 16. Robinson back. Robinson with time. Steps up over the middle. Smith on midfield. First down to the Florida State 49. And just like the Northwestern game, he finds the tight end Smoko when he needed a big first down. Often in football, a player will be carted off of the field, but it's rare to see one carted back on, which tells you a lot about Paul Pozlesny. He wants to come back out and watch the end of this after the x-rays were taken back there. Penn State's at the line of scrimmage. Back goes Robinson, long and deep. Norwood behind the secondary. Wide open Norwood at the 30, 25, 20. Norwood to the 15 and down to the 11-yard line. Great job of the hurry up here by Galen Hall and Michael Robinson. They caught everybody off guard. Florida State's looking around. They're lucky that they were able to catch up to Norwood. The freshman theme continued. Norwood, the big catch. Kevin Kelly with a chance for the big kick. The first true freshman place kicker at Penn State in 15 years. He had already set a freshman scoring record. The story was all there in the bright lights of the Florida night. The orange ball on the left foot of Kevin Kelly. Put down by Jason Gannon. The kick by Kevin Kelly is up and the kick is no good. 
In a moment that reveals the true nature of the Penn State football family, Kelly returned to the sidelines to find nothing but encouragement from his teammates and his head coach. This just meant the night would last a little longer. It was the third time a BCS game had gone to overtime. Penn State's defense was determined they would come out on top. Drained from a full night's work already, they still chased Drew Weatherford in the backfield. And they still hounded his receivers downfield. Packs it out, Donnie Johnson in. Two near side, one far side, Weatherford under center. Weatherford play action fake. Long and deep, far corner of the end zone. Knocked away and incomplete by Armour Phillips. Phillips ensured that the Seminoles would not get a touchdown. In fact, with kicking suddenly becoming a problem for both sides, they wouldn't get anything. 44-yard attempt, kick by Sismatia is up, and that kick by Sismatia is no good! And now the Nittany Lions have their shot in overtime to win it! But Joe Paterno's team didn't move the ball either. With anxiety building in the stands as well as on the sidelines, Penn State was again a kick away from an Orange Bowl win. Kelly from 38 for redemption, for the win! Missed it again, wide left, and the game goes on. Disappointed? Yes. Disheartened? No. Well disciplined and well coached, the Nittany Lions again provided nothing but encouragement for Kelly. In the second overtime, Penn State got the ball first. There would be something different there. For in the first overtime, the Lions stuck strictly to the ground game. This time, they went to the air with Michael Robinson, and it worked. While Kelly paced nervously, a completion to Jordan Norwood, who took one for the team, set up a third down and what would have been about a 37-yard field goal try if they didn't pick up the first. Third down, four at the 19. Back goes Robinson. Over the middle, he's got Kilmer at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, Kilmer inside the 5 to the 2-yard line, and Ethan may be to the 1. Third and four from here, the field goal is 37. Robinson throws to Ethan Kilmer, who caught it at the 10, at the 5, airborne like Elway to the one-yard line. It was after midnight now, and the instant classic continued. No one had gone home, and the TV ratings were soaring. Second and goal at the 2. Robinson, option play near side, pitches it to Scott. Scott, touchdown! Penn State, and the Mitten Lions take the lead in overtime. I'll tell you what, what a great job by Michael Robinson. Great job by Kilmer, and then Austin Scott finishing it off, going off left tackle, and bouncing it in the end zone off the option. Florida State had no option now. They had to score a touchdown. For Scott, a career-high 26 carries, 110 yards. But the Seminoles were stubborn. As Penn State dug in to try to clinch it on defense, quarterback Drew Weatherford worked the sidelines and Greg Carr made a third overtime look like a very real possibility. Coleman's blocking. Dean's going up the middle. He's at the goal line. We're an extra point from triple overtime. Touchdown, FSU. Put down, Sismatius kick for the extra point is up, and the kick is good. Tied at 23. We go to the third overtime, where now, if you score a touchdown, you must have a two-point conversion. This is the longest game Penn State has ever played. Penn State had never been in overtime in a bowl game before. Their defense now was running on fumes. They were still running. Fatigue can not only affect the body, but the spirit. But the Nittany Lions would not let that happen because this was the cherry on top of the Sunday. They would not let their marvelous season be tarnished, and again they stopped Florida State. Good snap on third to six, back to pass, chased by Rice, throws far side, incomplete, and Rice created that. So now we'll see Gary Sismatia. This will be about, uh, looks like a 38-yard attempt for him. Put down, kick is up, Sismatia's kick is 
Hit the upright, no good, and Penn State has life again. Who knows why kicks in the South Florida night suddenly became such an adventure, but they did. Motion by Butler away from us. They double out to King near side 30. To the corner 25, just a 20, lowers the shoulder inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. Many kickers would have hoped for a touchdown, but Kevin Kelly wanted another chance. Robinson under center. Robinson rolls near side to the right. Robinson to the 15 for first down to the 13 yard line. Joe Paterno gave Kelly that chance on second down with a stipulation. If the Seminoles lined up right, the play was to be a fake. Florida State did not cooperate. And Kelly kicked again. on its way and the kick by Kevin Kelly is good and the Nittany Lions win the Orange Bowl and cap an 11-1 season by beating Florida State 26-23. to And they mob Kevin Kelly right now as he made that field goal and Joe Paterno is walking out to try to find Bobby Bowden and this game is finally over. The effort of the Orange Bowl sees the Nittany Lions beat Florida State 26 to 23. It was fitting that a freshman ended it. It had been that kind of a year. It had been that kind of a team. I mean, it means a lot. I mean, Coach Paterno's going through a lot of criticism. People wanted him to leave. I can't believe people wanted him to leave this great team right here. And we definitely finished it like we wanted to finish it. It was fitting that a season Penn State fans didn't want to see end, almost didn't, at least not until nearly 1 a.m. I just, I just figured it was, it was a good Lord testing us. I mean, we just had to keep persevering. I, I kept telling the, uh, the offense, look, we got to make a play. We got to make a couple of plays. And the coaches did a great job coaching this game. You want one more game, or was tonight enough? <laughs> <laughs> right now, tonight was enough. But um, it's definitely gonna be hard, you know, not, not playing at Beaver Stadium, not playing in front of these great fans again. It's all that matters. It's all that matters how it ends. We won. It, nobody a year ago, nobody thought we'd be here, and we're here. And not only we're here, we won. Baby. And we went on top. The two winningest coaches of all time, nearly five hours of football, and no one was in a hurry to go home. The South had been hospitable after all.